Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. If you're wondering why I'm crying, it's because I've been yawning and uh, the tears are flowing from my deep tiredness. How are you doing? I'm okay. We launched a giveaway yesterday. In case you didn't know, we have a 200,000 subscriber giveaway going on and I'll tell you more about that after I tell you about today's video sponsor, which is FreshBooks. My friends, FreshBooks is the invoice and accounting software that makes sure that your small business is actually taken care of. You can do expense tracking, you can do invoice tracking, you make sure that you get paid on time by submitting invoices and knowing when the client opens it, just like we do here at UFD Tech to make sure that uh, companies are paying us for the sponsor spots that we do. We keep track of everything on the internet and FreshBooks is an easy way for you to do that because you can create professional looking invoices, file expenses fast, and they'll grow alongside your business to make sure that all of your needs are met and you have the tools that you need at your disposal. So join the 24 million people who have used FreshBooks. Try it for 30 days for free, no credit card required. Go to freshbooks.com forward slash UFD tech. Go to freshbooks.com forward slash UFD tech and enter UFD tech in the how did you hear about us section. Again, freshbooks.com forward slash UFD tech first and UFD tech in the how did you hear about us section. And now we're going to talk about how you guys heard about the giveaway because uh, thank you so much for 200,000 subscribers. Obviously, we did the video yesterday going over, you know, this channel and who we are and the things that uh, have made us happy about this. And Wootware, who has been us since the very beginning, is sponsoring an RTX 2080 Ti as well as an NVMe SSD for the giveaway. You can enter at the link in the video description if you guys want to check that out. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump on into the hot news. By the way, we have timestamps in the description and in the pinned comments so you can just check out at your leisure which ones you want to know about. First, let's talk about AMD and upcoming discussions about Zen 2, their new architecture and things that are going on with Ryzen 3000s. It doesn't look like this is going to be the unveiling of the, you know, the product launch, but it does look like at GDC, which is March 18th through 22nd, we are going to get some more insight into the Ryzen 3000 series because AMD is slotted to talk about their Ryzen processor software optimization, which is presented by AMD and the presentation is supposed to be about learning about the Ryzen lineup of processors, profiling tools and techniques to understand optimization opportunities, and get a glimpse of the next generation of Zen 2 x86 core architecture, and then gain insight into a whole bunch of other stuff. So it looks like they're going to go into more detail about Zen 2 and everything that goes along with those CPUs, which should help us understand the type of performance increases we might be expecting from the Ryzen 3000 series. Obviously, we've had leaks in the past that make it seem like the 9900K is just going to be child's play for people who have $100 to $150 because you're going to get equivalent performance from AMD in that price range based on all the rumors and leaks out there. But GDC, in about a month, we could get more information about how exactly AMD is going to do that. So keep your eyes peeled and ears heard for that. And in case you like Dead Mouse and EVGA, they're doing a giveaway uh, together because they have a Dead Mouse build, which it actually looks pretty cool. That Dead Mouse Cinco is going nicely. I just mentioned it so you guys can enter if you want in addition to the 28 Ti giveaway that we have. But it's also now news that TSMC is saying that they're going to go into mass production for their seven nanometer EUV lithography in March of 2019. Up until this point, they've been using seven nanometers that's on their DUV, which is deep ultraviolet, not extreme ultraviolet. And on the seven nanometer chips that they've already produced for the likes of AMD and Apple, that's made up 9% of their shipments as of right now. But combining DUV with EUV, it looks like it's gonna make up 25% of their shipments. And if I had to guess, NVIDIA will probably announce some graphics cards on seven nanometer EUV, probably towards the end of this year, or maybe even early next year. I would expect that NVIDIA's new GPUs, Turing or otherwise, are gonna be based on this lithography. So it's kind of exciting that they're going into mass production because we're gonna get more competition, hopefully. Gosh, I'm so tired of paying $1,200 for a graphics card. Help me. Then let's talk about Radeon 7, because it's not dead news yet. Uh, apparently, since a whole bunch of people are buying this card for professional purposes, AMD not only gave it extra FP64 performance on launch, they're also going to give it Radeon Pro driver support to unlock extra features for the professional type of stuff. Again, this thing is a marketing calamity. Who is it for, AMD? You need to decide. You gotta pick one, because you're marketing to both, and you're gonna lose here. 
Anyways, it's a great card, uh, but I just wish AMD knew what they were doing with talking about what's going on. And I wish that they actually were ready to launch this thing because in case you didn't hear, they forgot to include UEFI support on the Radeon 7, meaning that you couldn't go into your BIOS if you had a Radeon 7 card. And AMD was like, whoopsie, not, it's not that it was broken, it just wasn't included in the card. How? We've been on UA5 BIOS for so long. You guys had this on the RX 400 series. Why? Anyways, the update for it is out now. AMD quickly reversed that giant issue that, that came out. If this doesn't prove that this was a rush launch that probably shouldn't have been released on February 7th, I don't know what else is. Like, I get the significance of 2, 7, Vega 2 on the 7th, Radeon 7. It makes sense. But if you had launched it two weeks later, who really would have cared, AMD? Come on. And then there's a Reddit post on a giant compiled meta review of the Radeon 7, in case you guys are interested, showing based on a whole bunch of different companies who have reviewed the Radeon 7, where exactly does it stack up against the competition? It appears it's exactly like a 1080 Ti in most reviews, a little bit under a 2080 in other reviews, and then about 30% faster than a Vega 64 as well. But again, you can check that out with the link in the video description. Now let's talk about the, the part that probably riles me up the most and I don't usually say negative words on this channel but gosh dang Activision are a bunch of buttholes like sewage spewing disgusting looking infested buttholes is what I can call Activision for essentially what is one of the worst things that they could possibly do. So they had to give an earnings call about how much money they made in Q4 of 2018, since they're a publicly traded companies, these things happen. And he got to talking about how Q4 2018 was the best quarter they've ever had. 2018 was the best year on record for their finances. But guess what? Sorry, 770 people. Even though we're making as much money as we possibly could, you're all getting laid off and you might get some severance package included in that. But uh, yeah, we're gonna keep all of that money that we made to ourselves and the hardworking people who actually got it for us can go fly a kite while you try to figure out how to provide for your family since we don't care about you. This is, this is disgusting, like especially with how they did it. This is not okay. I understand that running a business means that you might have to make hard choices like this, but you couldn't have chosen a worse time to actually implement that. We made a lot of money, but screw the people who actually earned it for us. That's, this is ridiculous. It's not okay. They're deprioritizing initiatives that are not meeting expectations and reducing certain non-development and administrative related costs across the business. Whatever, you can call it whatever you want. It, this is, this is, honestly deplorable and I personally besides the fact that we might have to get some games for benchmarking I really don't want to support Activision at all for this it's a good thing Bungie broke off of them so Reese can keep playing Destiny but uh Tank you have to stop playing Overwatch company mandate why because uh Apex is better agreed and <laughs> and Activision Blizzard is a bunch of buttholes agreed. it's mostly Activision obviously yeah play Ac Apex Obviously that supports EA, which there, I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of months we're gonna see the exact same thing happen from them. I'm riled up. My jimmies are rustled. Look at me. I'm, I'm frothing at the mouth. I'm frothing at the mouth. Look at my foams. <laughs> Let's talk about another game developer, Epic. They've been in some hot water for stealing dances, apparently, and everybody under the sun has been represented by the same law firm and suing them for copying dances. Anyways, they've actually responded saying, hey, you can't copyright dances since they're an expression of humanity. That's ridiculous. And then they are also like, but even if we did, even if we did get steal your dances, it's a little bit different because, you know, while one's used for music, ours is used for celebrating victory royales. And then also talking about actual differences. Uh, uh, moreover, whereas in the dance step, the torso, shoulders, and head face frontward where the ribs move from side to side with the arm movements. <laughs> and swipe it, the torso, shoulders, and head turn to the side with arm movement, and the ribs remain in place. We didn't steal it, but if we did, here's how we would have done it because we did it differently. I just see Bungie like, hiding away in a corner because they have the exact same dances in Destiny. No, the only reason they're doing this is because Epic or Fortnite got so huge. That's it. That's the only reason they have to deal with it. But you know who else is huge? Apple. And apparently they are trying to create the Netflix for news. You know, all of those websites that have paywalls behind the articles you want to read and then a company that has access to that paywall just republishes that and then you have the article you needed anyways. Well, 
Apple doesn't seem to know that that exists. And so they want to charge you $10 a month for you to access those news sites that have paywalls, except for they want to take 50% of that entire cut. So they're going to take five out of the $10 and that extra $5. And then that extra $5 is going to be divvied up to the companies that make the news based on how much read time they get. So just like YouTube. Yay. Uh, apparently people aren't happy. Wall Street Journal doesn't want to split $5. How could they? Especially when, uh, you know, I can just go anywhere and read their articles without paying for the paywall because other people do. Ah, and then in case you're wondering about the 1660 Ti that's supposed to be launching, I guess, on Friday or maybe even next Friday, depending on who you listen to, there are boxes confirming, yes, the terrible name is indeed a reality. Obviously, we've discussed that the reason they're calling it this is because we're going to talk about it, but I'm not going to talk about it more than this. 1660 Ti coming out sometime soon. 1070 like performance for 280 but you want to pay more for less. Well, apparently MSI thought it was a good idea to come out with the RX 580. That's actually a 570 in the Armor Edition because it only has 2048 stream processors, which is how much a 570 has. And that's, they're calling it a 580 because that's what AMD decided to do. And so MSI was like, let's put our cooler on it and dumb. And then if you want more ray tracing, because everybody wants more ray tracing, besides we have ray trace merch, check out the link in the video description. If you want ray traced shirts or ray traced hoodies or ray traced pillows, we have it all. Check it out. But now you can get ray traced Unreal Engine since the latest preview is supporting the real time ray tracing using Microsoft's DXR and NVIDIA's RTX hardware. So it doesn't look like we'll be able to support it on Vega because it would be too slow. Anyways, neither here nor there, but Unreal Engine now coming with real time ray tracing, which is going to be fantastic. Fantastic for all those games. I just want Kingdom Hearts with Ray Trace. Please. Give me the Ray Trace. <laughs> Please, Ma. Sir, may I have some more? Do you have $3,000 to spend on RAM? Good, because Corsair is coming out with a 192 gigabyte kit for Intel's latest Xeon processor. This is obviously in paltry comparison to the G-Scale RAM that launched, which is the Royale edition with 192 gigabytes that costs, I believe, $4,500. So if you want to be cheap, you know, you can go Corsair. You want to be balling, you got to go G-Scale here. Speaking of balling, EA is balling in the free-to-play market because Apex Legends within a week has surpassed 25 million users with over 2 million concurrently playing this past weekend. That's a lot of people. That's a lot. That's that's a hectic lot. I'm just glad that it's getting rid of Fortnite. That's honestly where I sit on this. And I probably should have put this at the AMD section, but I didn't because I wasn't thinking when I constructed hot news. Anyways, AMD got some clap back for NVIDIA about deep learning super sampling, saying that uh, <laughs> uh, with DLSS, you get image artifacts caused by the upscaling and you get harsh sharpening. And then in case you want DLSS in Battlefield 5, the update is supposed to be coming out this week. I believe the patch notes came out yesterday. DLSS finally arriving in Battlefield 5, which means the RTX 2060 can finally get playable frame rate at 1080p with ray tracing turned on because you just down quality the sample and then you up res it with AI. And then in the best bit of news that we could have ever come across is uh, Shane Dawson's latest video on conspiracy theories talking about how Chuck E. Cheese reuses pizza slices and uh, Chuck E. Cheese obviously coming out the Chuck responding very firmly that that is not happening. All right, just because we have giant rats doesn't mean we have them scurry food back to the kitchen to give it out to other people, all right? The conspiracy theory basically is that uh, they mix and match pies based on what's going on. They'd have, like, if there's any left on the table, they just, you know, kind of, hey, nobody's gonna know. Anyways, fun fact, back when I was coming out of my senior year of high school, I got a job at Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, firmly had the job and never showed up for my first day of work because uh, I decided that I didn't want to work the summer before college. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I can't confirm whether this uh, conspiracy theory was real, but now I'm highly regretting the decision of not working there so that I could have known and confirmed it or denied it. But fun fact, I also used to work for a movie theater and we definitely reused the popcorn. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not obviously not off of the movie theater floor, but we were highly instructed several times to uh, keep it overnight. And our discussion with the manager of, hey, we've seen roaches in the popcorn container area was uh, not taken seriously. And then one time, my wife and I worked at this movie theater, she actually cut her thumb on the like fake butter, like the, the cause it was a metal container. She cut it and there was blood that fell into the like butter. And the manager was just like, so? Hook it up anyways. It was it was a sketchy movie theater. Had the cheapest prices in town. It was like 30 Rand to go see a movie because we only got the movies like seven to eight weeks after they came out. Anyways, good news, movie theaters closed down. 
<laughs> surprise, surprise. Although one of the worst things was that it was the most popular theater or most profitable theater in town because they didn't have to pay as high of prices for the movies we were getting since we got them late. It was a whole weird situation going on. Anyways, don't trust these places for your food. Just don't do it. And that's gonna wrap it up for Hot News today. If you ever wanted blood in your popcorn, well, you got it today here at Hot News. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Check out FreshBooks if you wanna use an innovative invoicing and accounting software that allows you to make sure you get paid when you need to and run your business effectively. And enter UFD Tech in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Don't forget to enter the 200,000 subscriber giveaway so that you can earn a 2080 Ti and use all that ray tracing, deep learning, super sampling. Unreal Engine 4 getting ray tracing means that 2080 Ti is gonna get put to proper use, my friends. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. Reese wants me to do a merch plug. You check that out at the link in the video description. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. You guys are amazing and I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too.